and we are back. Thank you so very much for choosing to stay with us. It feels absolutely great to be in your company. Now, right about now, it's time for us to have our gold conversation and our guest in studio will be shedding more light when it comes to the egg quality and also the market perspective. We are joined by Dr. Fred Oteno, a vet from the Atlantis Life Science. Asante Sana Kwa Thank you so very much for making time for us, right? Thank you, Dana. All right, so we're going to jump straight into the conversation. We are now learning that there's qualities of eggs, meaning there's good eggs and sure. bad eggs. Maybe you can start by telling us and also demonstrating for us when you're talking about a good egg quality, how does it look like? Now, first of all, Ngina, to know what a good uh, quality egg means, uh, that means that, uh, well, these are the characters that an egg possess that uh, makes a buyer or a consumer to prefer this particular egg from another one. Uh, now, from that perspective, you find a good quality egg, just like the farmer told you. Uh, there are the sizes. You must have a good size. Again, another one. You must have a well-formed egg with a good egg shape. Another one, you must have a, an egg with a good color. Uh, for me here, you can see have uh, some few eggs here for demonstration. Uh -huh. And uh, just on my far left, this, this particular egg here, you find that uh, it is of good quality, uh -huh. well-formed, clean, and very neat. Uh -huh. a, farmer will, a buyer will uh, prefer such a, a particular egg. Uh -huh. Now, you find uh, there are particular characteristics that you may find in uh, other eggs that are not uh, really preferable by the farmer. And those are the qualities that we'll say are of bad quality. Let us talk about the qualities that make an egg bad quality. Now, uh, first of all, just as I said, the size of the egg. Here with me, I have a, a big size egg and a very tiny size egg. Now for the big size one, this is one of the quality of a good egg. This is a quality of a poor quality egg. Mm -hmm. uh, then secondly, uh, I have one here that has a lot of uh, whitish material. Uh, this one, we say it has excess deposition of calcium in it. Mm -hmm. That makes the color be whitish. Mm -hmm. uh, from the look of it, it is not as white as I say, but it has a characteristic of a pinkish color. Mm -hmm. Different, if I say white, this is a white one. Mm -hmm. This one is pinkish. The pinkish one possesses a, a lot of calcium deposit. So but meaning the feeds that were given to the chicken had excess calcium. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, some farmers also use supplements, mm -hmm. uh, which may make these uh, eggs to deposit a lot of calcium mm -hmm. in the shell. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's this other quality, which is also a poor quality. That tends to be whitish. Mm -hmm. This is a sign of a disease. For instance, uh, such diseases that uh, you may find eggs having this characteristic are those that uh, we, uh, for example, we have uh, infectious bronchitis. Mm -hmm. When your birds are infected with infectious bronchitis, mm -hmm. you'll tend to have this particular color. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, conditions like uh, Newcastle disease, mm -hmm. and also when the eggs tend to age, mm -hmm. yeah, they also possess such poor quality uh, of eggs. All right. Now, when we have that very small size, like the first one, that's almost like a quail, yes. what is the reason? What would make um, a chicken produce such size of eggs? Yes, first of all, I'll want you to differentiate. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an abnormal, sm abnormally small size, mm -hmm. and then there's a, a relatively small size, then there's a large size. Now, for instance, this is an abnormally small size. This one occurs when uh, there's a, a condition, there's a problem, during uh, the, uh, repro there's a problem in the reproductive system that the, cow, the I mean uh, the bird cannot actually go through the complete process of reproduction so that you get a fully formed egg. In fact, in such eggs, you find uh, the yolk is not there, or if it is there, there are just some tiny materials in the yolk, meaning it is not full, it has not undergone the full process of reproduction. Mm. Yes. All right. Now, bringing back to the white one, where we have said there's chances of disease, not the pink one, the white one. All right. Sana sana kwa kukuya kienyeji, we'll see the egg, the shell is white. 
Yes. So does that apply because ya kienyeji sana sana iko white? Yes, so is true. there a problem when it comes to kienyeji sababu inajua ni layers? Not really. Mm -hmm. Now for these ones you know they are uh, breed specific. Okay. For instance you have uh, the layers breed. Mm -hmm. They'll tend to have this particular color the uh, th this particular a a egg color but for the kienyeji ones they'll tend to have a whitish. Mm -hmm. The reason being for these layers uh, the feed they're given, mm -hmm. they're always particular. Mm -hmm. And like uh, that one of uh, Kienyeji birds, mm -hmm. which are wandering around, mm -hmm. we say they're free range. Mm -hmm. They may get a lot of feed uh, supplements or even other particular feeds that will make the egg mm -hmm. come up with this color. Mm -hmm. Yes, but definitely for Kienyeji, it is not that it is a pathological condition. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now let's talk about when your chicken is sick and it's releasing this kind of egg. Yes. Does it have any health implications if I consume the egg like this? Exactly. The chicken will present with clinical signs. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you have infectious bronchitis, they'll be having respiratory infections. Mm -hmm. Also, for cases of uh, infectious coryza, mm -hmm. uh, you'll also tend to have such particular color. Mm -hmm. And also when they stress, especially during heat stress, mm -hmm. also cold stress, mm -hmm. you also the, ch the color will tend to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you, the, the chicken will present with clinical signs that will definitely uh, make you know there's a problem and you'll also see it in eggs. And if I cook this to consume as a human, will I still get the nutrients I was to get from a normal egg? Well, the nutrients are there, mm -hmm. uh, just like the normal egg, mm -hmm. but uh, it is not to the quality mm -hmm. or to the standard that a good egg should have. Right. Yeah. Now, Talk to us more about egg collect collection. What are some of the precautions a farmer needs to follow when they're doing egg collecting to minimize breakage? And also let's talk about hygiene practices that are expected as well. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, well, there are several uh, hygiene practices that uh, a farmer should always consider when uh, collecting eggs. First of all, we don't want eggs that are contaminated because that is the basic. Uh, remember when you're collecting eggs, uh, especially for those that are, are reared in a deep litter system. Mm -hmm. You'll find uh, there are feces there, I mean chicken droppings are there, and there are also egg, uh, where, where you, the eggs are laid just on the droppings. Mm -hmm. So you tend to have a lot of dirty eggs. For instance, one that I have here. You see these are a very dirty egg. Eh? Mm -hmm. Uh, chances of uh, this egg being contaminated is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, inside this egg, there's a yolk which is really nutritious. It has a lot of nutrients and it tends to attract a lot of bacteria. Mm -hmm. So once uh, it is in contact with something that is contaminated, mm -hmm. uh, there are pores on this shell and this bacteria will get through those pores and affect the yolk. Mm -hmm. And that's why the farmer was telling you, yolk is very important mm -hmm. when uh, considering the egg quality. Mm -hmm. So those are the reasons why you need to consider good hygiene practice when doing egg collection. Mm -hmm. Secondly, always, especially for those uh, uh, intensive systems, there, there are bells that collect these eggs. In these bells, they need to be disinfected and to be free of any bacterial contamination. Mm -hmm. And again, as a farmer, also you need to wash your hands, mm -hmm. also disinfect your hands mm -hmm. when doing uh, this uh, particular collection. Mm -hmm. There are several disinfectants that are uh, very friendly to use mm -hmm. in such conditions. For example, when uh, collecting eggs, mm -hmm. a disinfectant like Biosec, which is from the word biosecurity, mm -hmm. creates a good biosecurity for your hands and even for the environment, mm -hmm. so that when you do collection, it is healthy and free from any contamination. Great. Yes. Now, Another challenge that we are seeing in the market right now and with our farmers is that we are having a shortage of chicks. We have visited um, several farmers and their brooding rooms are empty. Sure. What is the problem? Why are we facing that right now? And what are the repercussions if this does not change? Uh, thank you. Uh, you remember uh, when we had the corona, uh, during that corona period, so many people ventured on this business of uh, poultry production because it is something you can do remotely at home mm -hmm. without any strains. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, that's the first time we began experiencing this particular high demand. As you know, right now, 
so many products that you use in the market are from uh, poultry. And uh, again, even the poultry products like eggs and even uh, meat from the broilers, mm -hmm. there is high demand in the market. Right now, the hatcheries we have cannot sustain the demand that is in the market. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are having this particular shortage mm -hmm. uh, of, of these chicks. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to hatcheries that are well developed like uh, Ken Chick, you find there is a long line of booking. For you to get uh, day old chicks, you have to wait for at least more than four months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why we are having this particular crisis. Is as there we speak. a solution that we yes, put there's in a place? solution to this. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, a, in fact, it is a, a solution and also an opportunity for some investors to also get into the game. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, right now we have few hatcheries that are registered with the Kenya Breeders Association, Kenya Poultry Breeders Association. And uh, this hatchery, they cannot meet the demand. Remember, if we just estimate currently, the demand is at about 400,000 chicks per day. Mm. Uh, the, the demands that uh, are there are 400,000 chicks. Mm. Mm. Right now, we cannot actually get to meet that demand. Okay. So what happens, we encourage investors to start buying what we call the parent stocks. Mm -hmm. The parent stocks are those that are bred from uh, the original breeders, like the pure breeds. Like you have a pure breed of Legon to give you, you cross it with a, a, another layer like Lamans. There's a breed called Lamans. You'll get a good breed, you get a parent stock. So when they buy this parent stock, mm -hmm. they are able to uh, hatch them. Right. and they get uh, to solve these issues of chick crisis. Great. Yes. All right. Such a fantastic conversation we're having right here with Dr. Fred on all matters poultry farming. Now, there's something we call economics of production, and we would like to find out what that means in poultry farming. That and a lot more will be forming our conversation when we come back from this short break. Don't go anywhere.